Hello everyone and welcome to my second stream this time in a better location I guess and so I'm a bit better organized I would say so I'm gonna record so um, I know it's a strange time for recording and streaming but my, my main purpose is for these videos is to put them on YouTube so it's okay so um what I want to do today is to be able um, to optimize a bit the whole um, Gauguin experience. So we've already seen how Gauguin works. Um, we basically can generate open graph images and social media images at runtime. So yeah, I've already opened the wrong file. So on each request, we want to generate a new image and we want to cache them and we want to make this a bit faster. So so let's see if today we are able to create a um, kind of caching mechanism for um, for Gauguin. So that's basically what we want to do today. Um, so we already know that we need to call a URL. Uh, we've seen that last time. And we already know that for every single URL, we got a template. And we can define templates inside of the Gauguin dot YAML file. Um, I will never know how to pronounce this, so if anyone knows, please tell me. <laughs> uh, by the way, what's the problem I see? Um, we say, okay, so for this path, you should be opening this file and read it and interpret it and so on. So the problem I see with that is that if we go on controller, <clears throat> we can now go on uh let's see it's been a long time <laughs> since i last wrote this this code um okay so we have the handle routes controller uh, which is basically an http controller uh, nothing too strange here um, we get the parameters from the url uh, we've seen that the last time um, and we also get the current route configuration so that's a catch-all route and we can abstract the uh, sorry. We can extract the configuration out of the the route, uh, taking it from the gogen.yaml file. And okay, so here is the problem in my opinion. We have to read the file, and and then we have to interpret it, and so on. So I want to make this a bit better. So um, I don't want every time we call this um every time we call this route i don't want it to to open the file close the file do whatever i just don't like this i want to try uh, to store the file information inside a kind of in memory cache or whatever i don't know if i am able to do so so that's a kind of an experiment here but the idea is if you're getting like 100 requests per second then you have to open 100 files. I don't want to do that. I want to use a kind of caching mechanism for that. I would prefer to read the file, put it inside Radis, and then um, and then call Radis and and proceeding with that uh, with with that string instead of reading the file every time. So that that's something I would personally prefer. So apart from that. What can we do? Um, I would proceed by using an LRU cache. So what are LRU cache? Let's see if I'm able to share something. <clears throat> Give me just one very little second here. Um, I'm not still a super expert on Twitch. I'm really sorry about that, but I should be able to, to share another screen now. Yeah, here is. Okay, so basically I want to use something like that. So LRU stands for last recently used. So we we get basically a stack and every time we um we, we have a stack of a fixed length and uh the most we use at night time inside that stack the more likely it will be for us to uh, to have this uh, at the top of the stack. So every time we access the stack, we uh, we basically go getting the uh, most recently uh, used um, 
item of the stack itself. So that's kind of the idea behind uh, what a what a last uh, LRU cache is. Um, this is from HashiCorp, so um, I've already used that in the past, and I don't like the fact that it's everything on GoDoc because, no, that's for a simple reason, uh, because many people tend to write comments in the code, and that's fine, but that's fine as long as you read the code base and the source code, but sometimes you, you just want better um, documentation. So let's hope that's not the case, I just can't remember. So for what I see, uh, we basically create a new stack and we say, okay, this stack needs to have like 128 elements and uh, I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna add basically uh, 128 um, placeholders inside my stack and every time I add something, uh, the, the least used uh, item of the stack gets thrown away and gives some space for uh, for uh, for a new one. So what what's so powerful about that data structure is that um, if you have like you, you can have like virtually I infinite items, but if you're not gonna use them, you you just don't need them, so you don't have to put them into a stack, and that's that's super cool. Um, okay, <laughs> let's see if we can make this work. Um, let me share again. I, I don't like that thing of Twitch that I can't share um, multiple. No, maybe it's just me that I'm a, a boomer. Uh, let me let me share my GoLand and shout out to IntelliJ who is um, who is giving me a free <laughs> subscription to their products as a Google Developer Expert. This is really appreciated. Thank you so much. So let's start by installing the the packages. So go get. Oh yeah, of course, I'm stupid. I have to go with github.com without HTTPS. I don't need the protocol. Okay, let's see if we can make this work. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> okay, we got it. So we may want to have this inside the controller package and that's because this is where we um, this is where we put all the things we need for for basically reading the file controllers and HTTP controllers and whatever. Um, so how do we do that? Well, that's a that's a good question actually. Um, let's see. We could go on. Um, we we could create just an empty stack using the init function, and we could go like here and say, okay, uh, var lru and then we can use the type of the lru cache which i don't know what is it i guess it's lru point let's see if intellij can help us yeah it's lru cache i guess and then we can use the init function so func init and that specific function will get called every time we um, we entered that file. So no, sorry. The first time we entered this file. So um, the first time we load that file for replying to an HTTP request, we actually execute the init function. So what can we do here? We're saying, okay, we have the LRU um, variable which has no value, and before doing anything else, I want this function to be deferred. So we can say like LRU it's equal to and here we can create a new a new cache so we can say like lru dot new and uh, let's say 128 items as a space um i guess it returns um an error so we can do like er er error and of course Let's call this LRU that way. Um, then we can say if error is not nil, then we can like panic or whatever. We will handle this. Oops, the Warus operator. I I love the fact that this operator is called Warus. <laughs> For what I know, also Python now it's accepting this kind of operator. I love it. And LRU it's equals to LRU cache. So what happens? 
whenever we call any one of those functions here, any one of these will have access to the LRU variable, which is becoming a global variable for that file only. And actually, we, we could potentially call this from other files because it's um, lower uh, uppercase letter, and we will handle this, I promise. So what we are doing now is we are initiating a new cache. And OK, so what we can do now is trying to understand uh, when we open a file, if we can look inside the cache and see if there is already um, that exact template saved inside our cache. So we could go here. And now I'm starting to try and understand how we can do that. I mean, LRE cache, if I remember correctly, accepts um, accepts an, an interface as a parameter. So if we go here, like we can test this out, LRU dot get, we got a key and we can also add, add so key and value. So the fact is we have an univoc uh, template name, which is univoc here. So we can use this as a key and we can use the conan of this template as a value, so as a string, which is actually an array of bytes, but we can convert this into a string in Golang quite easily. So if we go on templates, for example, we have articles here, article, here it is. So we want this to be the value of our LRU cache. So what we can do here, let's see where we we're opening the file. I will never find this. <laughs> I'm very bad at writing code. You should know that at this point. Um, OK, so template as string. First of all, we can do if. We can do, let's do that. var template, which is a string. Or we can say it's an array. It's a list of bytes which is even better because if you go on read util uh, sorry read file you will see it, re it will return an array of bytes so if lru so um for what i know there are certain lru caches that accept the has method but i can see anything here uh, so we have get length it's okay add for adding contains here is so if it contains the route dot template, which again is the name of the file we want to cache, then template it's equal to lru dot get route template. So we will see that there is a problem now. Um, oh yeah. Of course, that will return an error too, I guess. Oh no, it returns OK. Let's do that for the moment. Cannot assign an interface to template type byte. OK, we need to cast this so that it will return. Um, I just can't remember what I have to do that. Um, so let's do that. Sorry, let's use the words operator again. So now template, it's a not used, but we can say that um, cached, oops, cached template now contains the uh, the template we want to, uh, to cache, of course. Oh, sorry, I'm seeing from the chat, should probably be just get. If you check, you have a race condition. Um, you're absolutely right. I'm sorry I missed the moment where you write this. <laughs> I, I'm super sorry. Um, I will be paying more attention to the chat now on. I'm sorry. Um, I'm doing that from the, from the smartphone, so it's quite um, quite strange for me. Again, yeah, of course, I see a race condition here. Um, and that's because if you go um, like having like 1,000 requests per second, it's likely to have a race condition. But even though, uh, given that we are not um, Given that we are not updating that key with new values, 
then we can also accept a race condition in that case. Um, I know it's strange to say that, but uh, if we have a race condition here, it's not a big deal uh, because we would be updating the value uh, with the same value. So we are doing like twice the same operation, which is bad, but not so bad uh, for the final user. So that's what I want to, I mean, this is certainly something we need to avoid. So we can uh, try to, to avoid that in like next iteration, I guess. Um, by the way, we now want to say that template it's equals to, oops, cached template. And we need to cast to byte, so a slice of bytes. So um, what? why do we need that? Um, so Golang doesn't have generics. If you're following this video, I guess you already know that. But um, of course, um, the LRU cache, it's a stack. So we are putting key values pairs into the into the stack in that case. And we don't know which um, which type has, uh, sorry, which is the type for our values. And potentially every value could be of a different type. So for that reason, if we go on LRU cache, we will see that the, the get method, actually, we return a value which is of type interface, which is, oh my God, it's something really awful, but there's no other way for dealing with generics as for uh, Go, uh, I'm using the 1.6 version, if I remember correctly. No, one point, yeah, sorry, 1.14. So um, if I remember correctly, uh, Golang is gonna support generics in Go 1.18. I remember correctly. So for now, we need to cast our types. So basically we say, okay, cache template is of type slice of bytes, which can could be a string, but by the way, uh, we, can, we, we can assume this will be just an array of types and then we can convert this. And again, this is actually something I'm considering. I'm reasoning it, you know, by rubber duck programming. Um, as you can see here, we are passing, parsing a string. So we could also, just cache the string, but I don't want to overcomplicate things for now. Okay, so we said, okay, if our cache already includes that template, then we, um, I mean, if it doesn't include, oh, sorry, no, it includes, so we, yeah, of course, <laughs> if it includes the template, um, we get the template from the cache and we assign its value to the template variable. Otherwise, we need to read the file and assign that inside the LRU cache. So what we are doing now is lru.set or add, I can't, oh yeah, it's add, not set, okay. And as a key, we want to use the route.template. And as a value, of course, the template string Okay, so there is a problem here. Uh, bad naming, I'm shadowing a name, a variable name, as you can see here. And that's because we are using the template, template Golang package. So if you go to the imports, text template, we can't use that name. So we can say, um, chosen template. Before committing, I will be replacing some variable names, I guess. It's it's really awful the way I'm doing that. Um, okay, and then we say, choose a template, it's equal to template string. Let's see if that returns an error because I can't remember. Evicted, okay, so it returns a Boolean. Um, so our priority right now is to serve the customer um, sorry, the client. So, um, uh, let me read. Uh, doesn't LRU have a function which gets a key and a callback on of how to compute it? I don't know. Uh, neither do I, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so it's. I guess that LRU go and cache. So the caching mechanism we are using today, it's accepting. Um, an interface so we could potentially fit a function inside as, as a value so that we can compute value. 
I don't know if that's something we want to do, <laughs> to be completely honest. So um, I'm sorry. I don't know, but I will document myself and maybe we can talk about that next time because it's really interesting. Uh, thank you for, for your comment. And okay. So first of all, we say, okay, we have the template. Let's assign the template to, um, to choose a template. Um, of course, it's not used. Uh, give me just one second. And we say, if it's not okay, for any reason, we can just log something at this point, like fmt dot uh, print line unable to put item into LRU cache. Then we are gonna handle this differently. But uh, if you think of a um, of a log drain, uh, for example, you want to see that you are not able to assign something to the stack. And, oh yeah, uh, sorry, what's her name? Not sure, 90, okay. <laughs> okay, so um, it's this one from HashiCorp, Golang LRU cache. This is the, the library I'm using. Thank you so much for, for collaborating. And okay, so chosen template, we just replaced this and it should be working just fine. Um, we could also measure the performances because I'm I'm not sure this is increasing performances at this point. But um, ideally, uh, you should see um, an improvement when you have more requests because, of course, you're doing much more work right now. You are retrieving items from the stack. Uh, you're putting items into the stack, but you have to think of this uh, in a um, let's say when you want to scale your project. So you don't want to read and write and close files every time. You just want to access a local cache or a remote cache like Redis or whatever. We can also make this configurable. Um, and by this, I mean the size of our stack. And that's because uh, that could be the standard, but we could also accept a new parameter from the Gogan configuration here. Like, um, let's call it cache sites and just put a number. Um, I don't know if I like this, but uh, could be working. So let's take this as an example. And uh, let's go to the config um, domain. Uh, we go to the configuration number one. And as you can see, this is the, the type structure for the configuration. Um, don't care about this. I just commented this out because we don't need this at this moment, but um, we just need to add cache sites or potentially for the future, I would like to have something like that cache and then like type, for example, and we have, uh, local, which is the LRU cache we are using today or, uh, Radius. And when it's Radius, we want to pass the, um, connections train to Radius or connection parameters, but, um, let's keep things simple <laughs> for now and just say cache sites, which is, uh, that would be the default. So we go, we just copy this. We go on here and say, okay, cache sites is of type int and when inside a YAML file, again, please tell me, tell me how do I pronounce this? <laughs> because I'm pronouncing this YAML, I'm not sure this is the correct pronunciation, but okay. So uh, let's call it cache sites, because that's how we, we write that value. And again, this is a bad mistake I doing every time. Um, I don't know how I spotted this, but please use capitalizations. Otherwise you, you wouldn't be able to access uh, structures inside Golang because lowercase for the first letter means private, uppercase means public. So just to be clear. And um, okay, so uh, let's go back on the controller. And at this point, we could be able to get the configuration somewhere here. Let's see, we have get current route config, but I'm sure somewhere we can access the whole configuration. And I'm sure because I've seen that a couple of days ago. So uh, let's read the function handle routes, which again, um, most people I hear say YAML like, uh, okay, okay, but <laughs> okay. Maybe you should 
say that out loud, but um, YAML. Okay, YAML, YAML is fine. Okay, you know, reading is not really helping at this point, I guess. Okay, YAML is fine for me. Uh, by the way, so as we've seen at the beginning of this stream, uh, basically handle routes is a catch all routes. And we get the parameters from the um, from the URL. Uh, we get the current route. Um, so we get get current route config. Let's see for a moment. We get the path, and for each route inside our configuration, which is this one. So we have all these paths that are our routes. Um, yeah, of course, routes as you can see here. Uh, we find the right one. If we can't find it, we just say cannot find path, and that's an error. Why I put status okay? That should be a 404. Okay, I I, I see something to improve for the future. <laughs> I don't know what I had in my mind. And okay, let's go back here for a moment. So we need to get the entire configuration. Um, let's see where it is. Get image sites is not here. Oh, here is conf. So here is where we get the full configuration. We could move this up here. And okay, now let's make this. So we have all the declaration here. Oops. So basically here we have the configuration and and why am I doing that? Because I don't need this. Well, sorry, I made a mistake. After a whole day of work, it's quite overwhelming. Um, I always put to do in comments, otherwise I forget. You're absolutely true. Let's let let's do that immediately. Thank you so much. That's <laughs> that's absolutely true. So where where are we? Um, oh my God! We should get the correct route. Oh, here it is. So. To do this should return 404 this is absolutely correct thanks a lot <laughs> and okay so we need to get the configuration here inside the init function actually we could also say like conf which is of type config dot config dot um, this is the only version we have so uh, we can say like conf it's equal to but we won't do that for the moment uh, we, we we want to do we want to do that in a more structured way in 2030 go refuses to compile unless to do were removed well <laughs> that would be great i gotta say <laughs> so okay now we can get here as a sites conf dot cache sites um, we could also go with a with a default so var cache sites int and then we can use that as a variable here now we can go using if cache site oh sorry if conf dot cache sites cache sites it's equal to conf dot cache sites as cache sites it's equal to our default why is complaining now oh oh yeah this is where I'm used to JavaScript <laughs> this is where you see it um, so I guess this is not equal to nil No, that can be an ill uh, because I cannot convert this to type in. Okay, so here's here's a problem I am having. If anyone from the audience can help me, but when you have an empty string, you can say, okay, it's not equal to empty string. Um, um, but in the case of having um, when we have um, oh, that's why. Wait, wait a second. I'm not saying that this could be potentially um, 
invalid. Oh wow. Um, so let's let's do that for a moment. Let's say cache sites it's mandatory just for the sake of testing this out. Um, again, we're gonna we're gonna fix this. But let's say this is mandatory for the moment. Then we're going to fix this. Um, it should be all right. Uh, so what we did, quick recap, we started an LRU cache, which is basically a stack containing a limit of 128 items. So LRU stands for last recently used. So the most used item inside the stack is at the top of the stack itself. And every time you use, um, we use uh, an element that is part of the stack, we put it on the top. So it's more easy to assess because we're, we're assessing this most frequently. And this is where the power of the data structures comes. So um, we basically said, okay, every time you want to render a route, please check inside the stack if we have the route. If we don't have it, just open a file, put it, put the content inside the stack and use that as a, as a, as a, as a value for, for rendering the template. So we can run now container dev, which is a command I created for uh, selecting the correct Docker compose file built for development purposes. Oh, of course, make, I feel quite old using make. <laughs> but make, it's amazing, seriously. There was a time where I was using make in JavaScript too because it was just amazing. Okay, so in the meanwhile, it should be working, but, but Let me share another screen for a moment. I need to be more, I guess, agile where, <laughs> while, while you're dealing with, uh, with the Twitch stuff. No, I, I will share the, the other screen when, um, when the compilation, it's, it's failed, of course. Fuck. Okay, give me just one second. Okay, so compilation has failed. Let's see why. Missing Gosa. Oh, so okay. So good news. This is not about the code. <laughs> this is about the installation process. Uh, it's downloading. Let's try to run this locally just for the sake of trying. not doing anything. Um, so the problem I see here, oh, uh, why compiling inside a container? Um, yeah, uh, there's a good reason why, let me share you. Um, so in order to run uh, Gauguin, I need Google Chrome. And when you're dealing with Google Chrome on remote environments, it is really hard for you to set up a Google Chrome um, instance inside of, uh, let's say, an EC2 or a Compute Engine. I mean, you don't want to do that. You typically want to run Google Chrome inside a container and host it somewhere. So I want to be sure that it is working properly wherever we are. So I prefer to test my code inside a container so that we are in a let's say in, in the same situation we should be in production or staging or whatever. So we basically run the, the whole process inside uh, stateless containers, which communicates um, under the same network. And we have the Google Chrome container and the Gingonic container. Again, why Gingonic? Because that's the, <laughs> uh, the web framework I'm using for Golang. And okay, we can also go like go, uh, Let's try with just go compile. I see. Oh my God, I can't remember. 
You see, that's one of the times I feel like I'm stupid. Uh, I can't remember how to compile Go because I'm too used to make files. Um, isn't it slightly slowed down the development cycle? Well, it depends. I would say if you if you go with test driving development, it's not really um, a problem because you, of course you have your tests uh, telling you uh, what's going on, and then you have integration tests running inside containers. So eventually. You will need containers too. In that specific case, yes and no. Uh, problem is, without using a Google Chrome, it is really hard for me right now to develop this kind of application. So I prefer running everything inside a container, just to make sure, because that's been quite painful for me uh, to use containers. Uh, uh, sorry, to use Google Chrome for these applications. So I would prefer running inside every uh, inside a container which has the same situation we will see in production i hope that answers your questions of course and okay if i go like go run uh it will fade google chrome the google chrome container up run right now but i just want to see if it compiles so that's my main purpose right now and it's taking a long time, so I guess it's not working properly, but let's see. Oh, no, it's working. But, of course, part it's already in use, but it's compiling. So that's, that's great. Uh, the problem wasn't on the code. Uh, let's see. Um, I guess the problem is I'm not... Uh, where were... Okay, here it is. So this is the code I'm running. Oh, yeah, go compile. I, I was meaning go build, of course. Uh, stupid myself. So missing go dot sum entry for module. OK. Um, let's see if that's true. This is like the lock file. And now actually, I can see it. So that shouldn't be a real problem. I would say. Let's try again, but oh, you say good mod tidy. Oh, well, let's try. Okay, nothing really changed. Let's see the go mod file. We have this one, which is correct. Maybe I'm not coping. Uh, let me see the Docker file. Um, okay, no, I'm copying everything, so I'm quite sure I'm copying the go mod file, um, and I'm currently compiling that. Oh, let, let's try with just that command for a moment. I know the problem is not with the compilation, but with the dependency. Uh, but yeah, go. Because you see, we have everything inside our Go mod. So I don't know. That's kind of strange. With Lang, to be this is something that typically happens with other languages, such as Python. Uh, the, the, for like two times a, a year, I use Python, and I always get stuck with <laughs> that situation. <laughs> and that's why I'm not coding Python, even though it's an awesome program language, of course. But that was the reason why I, I wasn't coding Python. So, okay, it compiled. Uh, yeah, here it is. Let's remove it. <clears throat> okay. Oops. Oh, God. Whew. I'm starting to feel tired. Yesterday, I got my third shot of vaccine, and I'm starting to feel like quite, <laughs> you know, quite sick. So... Let's hope for the best that it's compiling so I can go to sleep. <laughs> Let's see what's going on. Oh, the stream is choppy. I'm. Let me see what's going on. Uh, 
I'm revo removing a couple of things from the stream. So now it should go should go better, I hope. Please let me know. Oh, better. Okay. Uh, I was sharing too many things. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, as you can see now it's working fine. Uh, let's wait for a moment. So after the compilation phase finished, I want to share the browser screen so we can test if GoGain is still working. And let's finger crossed. Yeah, also I have a very bad network. I'm thinking of getting Starlink, even though it's really expensive, but you know, living outside Milan, I'm living in a little town near Milan, so um, internet connection, it's not the best here. So I guess I, I will need to have um satellite connection via Starlink. <laughs> it's incredibly expensive, my God. So talking about development development cycles, um, this is something we were pointing out. I remember when I started coding Haskell, people were telling me, first you have to compile in your mind then the actual program. And I gotta say when working with, uh, um, with Goland or smart IDs such as Goland, of course, um, from IntelliJ, you, you have a great help from the IDE, so you know that your query is going to compile and you test your um, you test your edits just at the end of your development cycle uh, because you prefer maybe to run tests, you prefer to run uh, a small unit test integrations and so on. So eventually you, you don't really need to be fast in, uh, let's say, you, you don't need to be fast in booting the application itself because you don't want to test the whole application every time. Okay, okay, so this is the time of truth. Let me share the other screen. Give me just one second. Okay, here it is. Please let me know if the if now it's working properly. Let's go on GitHub for a moment so I can take the um the correct URL. Here is. Okay, so I, I want to follow the tutorial. I should be able to get an image when I go here. Finger crossed, my friends. Let's see if it's working. Oh, wow, it's working. Yeah. Woo! So, okay, it took one second to get the whole image, which is a lot. Let's try again. It now took one second. So I, I think I slowed down the whole program. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not that the reason why, but it's internet connection and everything else, but it's working fine. So um, let's go try with this one and that equals true which returns the HTML for the template, so you can edit this. And... Oh, thank you for, so much for the comment about Starlink. I'm gonna read this as soon as I finish the, um, the stream. So let's go here for a moment. Let's make like uh, Michele here. Okay, so I... Let's say I want to, okay, I'm running a couple of more just to see if the, um, if the rendering time uh, increases or decreases or whatever. Okay, I would say it's kind of stable. Let me share again. Give me just one second. Oh, 
Okay, so I would say it's quite stable. Uh, that needs, uh, sorry, that means that we are hitting the cache. So as you can see, we are looking inside the cache, we are getting the, uh, the result back. And so it's working fine. One thing I will do offline uh, is to make some unit tests, of course, integration tests. And I wanna make a benchmark. I want to benchmark this with the solution we implemented today. And I want to compare this with a benchmark. Um, oh, here it is again. Sorry. <laughs> to do this should return, uh, I don't know, 401, it depends, uh, or no, five, five, uh, sorry, 500 should be better. So I want to test with and without the LRU cache. So I want to see <clears throat> like uh, running, um, I don't know, 100 requests per second with and without and see and compare. And if everything works fine, I just merge this. Uh, I create a pull request and I merge this. And I guess that's all for today. So, oops, wrong screen. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that was all for today. Thank you so much for following the stream. Um, I'll be back with more streams, maybe one about uh, how to run tests, how to deploy Gogan. It depends on what you want to see. Please let me know because it's really, really fun and I, I really want to, to do more of this. So um, thank you again for being here. See you next time.